Amen. I believe in the word of God. Amen. This is my authority. Amen. Not only my authority and the guidance of my life. Amen. But I have a passion to read. I have a passion to know. Amen. About the very God that loves me. About the very God that saved my soul. Amen. I still believe in the word of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's good to be in God's house. Thank God for all of our visitors this morning. Now look at this little guy. Yes, I'm going to partake of that in a minute. Amen. But it's good to be in God's house. It's good to be with God's people this morning. Amen. Oh, it's good to be with God's people. Amen. Amen. Worshiping and praising together. Amen. Oh, it's such a blessing. I, w- I want you to know that there's such a power in unity and love. Amen. Being with, with God's people. Amen. Yes, it is. But we thank, we're so thankful to gather together this morning. All righty. This morning, our, our, our Bible reading is going to come out of Acts chapter 5. Amen. Acts chapter 5. We're living in a time right now where your, your life and your faith, amen, and the way that you think has to be solid on the Bible, amen, on the word of Almighty God. Yes, it does. Right now, we're living in a time that's real, getting real dark, isn't it? And people want guidance in darkness. People want an understanding of what's going on. And, and we've already seen Walmarts, amen, gone. I, I wonder when they were, when they were rioting and, and, and stealing, did they take any Bibles? Probably not. They got convicted. They probably went right past that aisle. (laughs) But I know early on when this pandemic uh, of COVID-19 was was going on, people went into Walmart and the Bible shelves were empty. Amen. The Bible shelves were empty. I mean, they grabbed any version. (laughs) They didn't care (laughs) if it just had Bible on it. Amen. Because people want an answer. People want instruction. Amen. Amen. And it's in the word of God. In the word of God. And you can stand on God's word. Yes, you can. How a God that powerful can do anything. And even the Bible said that the universe is uphold, upheld by the word of his power. Amen. Just like he spoke it into existence. Think about it. Everything you have on right now has a word. Hello. And all God said is let there be. It's completion, ain't it? Let there be, and it was so. Ain't that his number seven? Ain't that seven? Let there be, and it was so. Oh, that's powerful. Amen? And he brought it into being by his word. Amen? Spoke it into existence, but then personally came down and handcrafted you. Oh, isn't that so special? You're just crafted in secrecy. God loves you. Amen. Crafted you in in his very image and in his likeness. Amen. You look just like God this morning. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Amen. You're his crowning creation and he loves you. Amen. I mean, you know, God loves you. We talked about that last night with a great love. Amen. With a great love. God loves everybody. Yes, he does. Amen. He loves everybody. But this morning, our Bible reading is going to come out of Acts chapter 5. Acts chapter 5. Starting at verse 34. Verse 34 this morning. Then stood there up one in the council. There stood up one in the council. A Pharisee. Oh, we read about them, didn't we? We read about them. Is a Pharisee name? What is it? Gimiel. Gimaliel, a doctor of the law, had in reputation among all people. He had a reputation among all people and commanded to put the apostles forth a little space. Man, this is a different Pharisee. Starting to sound like. Like, like Nicodemus, isn't he? 
the one who came to Jesus by night. And the reason why he came to Jesus by night, because he knew those who he had been in fellowship with desired to kill him. Amen. But he came to Jesus by night because he's like, man, this man's different. I mean, there's something different about his leadership. There's something different about his life. Amen. And he has so much love. Amen. He got 12 men following them, 12 men. Amen. That came off of a job. Amen. And he's been taking care of every last one of them. Amen. In our councils, we think that he's some bitter man of power. Amen. Some man that just hates people. Amen. But I don't see that. Nicodemus didn't see that, did he? So he came to Jesus by night to learn of him. Amen. To say, oh, good master. And I want you to know that Nicodemus. Nicodemus received one of the greatest scriptures, amen, that even the world knows about. I mean, you got football players, even basketball players, they'll write the scripture on their shoe, amen, or the football player, they'll mark it right under their eyes, that John 3.16, amen, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, should not perish, amen. But have everlasting life. Amen. We got everlasting life abiding in us this morning. Amen. Because we got the Son of God who is life. Amen. Abiding in us the day that we ask Jesus Christ to live inside of our hearts. Amen. And to begin to change us. Amen. As the Bible said, if any man be in Christ, he's a what? Oh, and old things are what? Oh, man, you had a funeral of your old life. Amen. God buried that dude. Amen. And all things are of God. Amen. Listen to the word of God this morning. It says, there stood there one in the council of Pharisee. He said he was a doctor of the law, of the law of Moses had in reputation among all the people and commanded to put the apostles forth a little space. Now, we know that the Pharisees, they were daily after Jesus and they didn't like his counsels. But now Jesus is seated in heaven at the right hand of the Father at this time. And now his disciples who are apostles, amen, out preaching and teaching and doing healings and miracles, operating in the same power and authority, amen, of their teacher, of their leader, amen. They're out as ambassadors, amen. We're ambassadors this morning. But he said, man, let's give these folks some break a minute. Let's, let's give them some space. Why are you harassing these men? And he said unto them, ye men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what you intend to do as touching these men. For before these days arose up Thaddeus, boasting himself to be somebody. Oh, man, we got a lot of those folks. Huh? I'm somebody. Let me tell you, your reputation don't come from what you say about you. It's from what people say about you. You can boast as a great leader. But if the people around you are failing, they'll say, man, I'm failing. I need to find a new leader. But now this is this is a leader in the council, a one that, that just said had a good reputation among the people. So they're going to give ear to this man. All right. But he talks about one leader in the past, Thaddeus. He boasted himself to be somebody to whom a number of men, about 400, man, 400 disciples, 400 men joined themselves who was slain and all as many as obeyed him were scattered. Now look at the connection that this man of the law is saying. He said this leader who boasted to be something, when he died, his disciples scattered. You see what I'm saying? Okay. And was brought to naught. That means if his disciples scattered, that means the counsels that these men were in came to nothing. That that truth, that that great leader, Thaddeus, got up to speak and gathered many disciples, that council probably ain't even in the earth anymore. It didn't keep his disciples together. 
They're now scattered. So verse 37, he said, after this man rose up Judas of Galilee in the days of the taxing and drew many much people after him. He also perished during the time of taxing. Man, he was probably gathering some feet like, you know what? This is just too much. This is too much. They're taking too much money. I just play. <laughs> oh, man. We got to do something. I'm reminded of that little kid playing Monopoly. He was just sitting there crying. And his mom, you know. She's like, oh, this is going viral. Stuck her phone up. Started recording them. They're like, what's wrong? He's like, it's not fair. They're like, what do you mean? What's not fair? He said, taxes. <laughs> oh, he was getting taxed playing Monopoly. Now, this young boy didn't like taxes, not even in a game. And he ain't even experienced taxes in real life. And he's just crying. He's a typification of us grown folks right now. Don't you hate when you get that card when it says, pay taxes on all your properties. It's like, man, I just got a hotel. <laughs> man. Anyway, let's get out of the board games this morning. We said, after this man rose up Judas of Galilee in the days of the taxing and drew many much people after him. He also perished. He also died. And all, even as many as obeyed him, were dispersed. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men and let them alone. For if this council, get this, if this council of this work be of men, it will come to naught. But if it be of God, he said, you cannot overthrow it. You can't overthrow it. He said, less happily you be found even to fight against God. Amen. Oh, I'm ready to preach this morning because I'm behind Jesus. He's our leader this morning. Amen. And, and after Jesus died, his disciples didn't disperse. Amen. No, they didn't. We're still together. Amen. We're his disciples this morning, still under his counsel. Amen. Still under his control. And that's the very thing that this man saw. He's like all of these other leaders, amen, that rose up in times past. When they died, their men dispersed and their counsels came to cease. But he said, I witness after this man, Jesus Christ, whom these men preach, had died, they're still together and they're getting stronger and he said you're fighting against the wrong counsel my friend you just might be fighting against God amen Woo! where did that come from even Siri came on I ain't even called for her <laughs> how many of you love God this morning how many of you love the leadership of the Holy Ghost amen I love the leadership of almighty God because God loves me amen Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Amen. How many of you know that this morning? He's the same yesterday, yesteryear, today, and forever. Amen. And he will always reign. Amen. There was great leadership down through the years of human history. And the list of the names are so exhausting and so we're not gonna really go through a list of names but I'm sure as you're hearing this message this morning you could think of some leaders in their council maybe even in the military great men rose up with great plans and strategic plans that even those who are getting into the military now are holding into and the, it's keeping their platoons together and so much it's just Hold them together as unity. Amen? We take care of our own. But there were great leaders down through the years of human history. There's an exhausting list of great men that led many 
and to great paths. Thank God for those that went before us. How many of you know that I ain't start this church in Bremerton? Amen? The pew you're sitting in right now, somebody before you paid for. The ones that went before you accomplished great things so that you can have what you have today. Oh, how great of a sacrifice. Amen? Of those that went before us. Amen? Oh, glory. Thank God for our military, for those who would lay down their lives for a great country such as this. Amen? Oh, God, help our country. But listen this morning. Even Israel had great leaders. They've also had some bad leaders. Hello. Such as Moses was a great leader. Led millions out of Egypt. Amen. Joshua, a great leader. King David, a great leader. He had mighty men that followed him. Mighty men of valor. Even to the point where they just would do anything to please their leader. Not to favoritism from him. But they loved him because he led them through many wars and kept them safe through strategic plans. And, and most of all, he would always encourage them, don't be afraid. The God of Israel is with us. Amen. That's how David's been from the beginning. Amen. When Israel was just out there shaking because Goliath was boasting himself to be something great. And he said, man, who is this old uncircumcised Philistine defying the armies of the living God? He said, is there not a cause? He said, I slew a lion and a bear with my bare hands and the same God that delivered them into my hands is going to be the same God that's going to deliver your big ugly self into my hands. Amen? He said, is there not a cause? He said, my God is bigger than this ogre. Amen? My God, amen, is a big God. Amen? And we have the victory in the living God. Amen? The battle is the Lord's. The victory is God's. And I want you to know, God, ain't, God is way higher than what's going on on earth. He's in heaven. Amen? The earth is his footstool. And it's, no matter what goes on in, on earth, amen, as long as he's in heaven, seated on the throne in full power and authority, the battle's all already won amen because heaven will always have more power than earth amen it's his footstool can you imagine god has the authority this morning but king david knew about his god and he would pray to his god i remember a time they went off to war i believe and then they came back and somebody took they took the wives the family Oh, man, I think they're about ready to kill David that time. <laughs> Amen. But David prayed, didn't he? Encouraged himself in the Lord. He wanted to go. And I think that's where the, the song came from. Maybe. I don't know. I went to the enemy's camp and took back what he stole from me. Amen. And he asked God, he said, God, we need to restore what's unto us. God said, that then he said, go. Go. Amen. I'll be with you. I'll be with you. And there will be times Israel, they would ask for a leader to be rosen up and just lead us into battle. And God's like, don't go. I'm not going to be with you. You better not go. You better not leave this camp. But they would go anyway and then come back crying. <laughs> don't you like how the Bible would number it? They lost three score, 300,000 score fell in one day <laughs> but listen David a great leader Abraham a great leader so many great leaders we can continue to name so many major prophets and minor prophets great leaders under the very hand of God that's what made them a great leader they followed the great leader. Amen. They followed the one who knows all things, who sees all things, who has the best strategies.
Israel had mighty leaders in. The Bible even prophesied of the greatest leader that would ever come. And so they would wait for this one whom the government would be upon his shoulders. They would be waiting for their Messiah, for their Christ that would deliver them and set them free. And Israel would have their kingdom and it would make more sense. Amen. That's why the disciples would always ask Jesus, will you restore the kingdom at this time? I thought that's what you were coming to do. If you're the Messiah, if you're the Christ, he said, no. Not this time. I came to die for sin. Amen. To set you free. Amen. So that you can have joy and full of the Holy Ghost. Amen. So that you can be saved and set free. Amen. And so he wasn't restoring at that time, but they had been waiting for their leader, for their, their king, for their Messiah, for their Christ. And prophecy after prophecy, they'd be waiting. Even Moses said, God is going to raise up a leader like unto me, to lead you. And it's going to be him that you're going to hearken unto and listen to, and he's going to lead you. But when he came, the Bible said they didn't even recognize him. But as we open up scriptures in the New Testament, out of the Gospels, Jesus is well known as being the leader of 12 disciples. I even think if you type it in, you know, in, in, in Wikipedia, I know folks are like, oh, don't trust that. You know, I agree to that, you know, false information. But Wikipedia, Google, no matter what it is, it, it would say that he's a leader of the 12 disciples. He was known of having his 12. But he was a leader. His leadership was amazing and still is amazing today. Amen. Because we're still impacted by it. We're impacted by his leadership right now. <laughs> That's amazing. Only Jesus can bring all of us in here. Amen. Of many different colors and race. Amen. God can do that. Look at the effects of his leadership. There was so much power and truth in his leadership that other leaders didn't like it because it began to show and make manifest the darkness that was in their councils. And so other leaders didn't like his leadership because of that. His leadership had so much truth and authority and so much light that it would shed and things that other leaders held in darkness, it would come to surface and it would open up people's eyes to their agendas. Hello. Even to the point where those religious leaders came to Jesus and said, oh, Herod's going to come and get you, which was the governor at the time, I believe. He's going to come stop your ministry. The governor's coming. He said, you go and tell that fox I cast out devils. What a message to relate to a governor. He cast out devils? Yeah, because that's the kind of authority that he has. I mean, Jesus just didn't have authority just to co govern what's on earth. Amen. But he had authority, amen, to cast out sicknesses, to cast out demons, amen, other things that had power in high places. Because Jesus had some real authority, amen, that would just speak and devils would go, amen. Jesus could speak and fix the very things that were plaguing the societies and, and the cities that the governors and many other leaders could not accomplish. They couldn't come up with any program of health to help these folks. Amen. But Jesus and his leadership could. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Do you need a healing this morning? Do you need deliverance this morning? Amen. Do you need a way where there seems to be no way? Amen. Won't you come under the leadership of Jesus Christ? Amen. Because he has the power. He has the authority. Amen. Yes, he does. He has the power and authority. It's in his leadership. But will you follow him today? Will you allow your eyes to be open today? And Jesus opened up our eyes 
as we follow him because of what he says in John chapter 8, verse 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of this world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Look at his leadership. He said, you follow me. Your eyes will be open. You see, it's in leadership. It's in leadership. Those that are following. We got to ask ourselves. We got to ask ourselves this morning, how am what I'm doing right now impact those, impact those that are following me? Because people will be following you. Amen? Whether if it's on the job, whether if it's family, amen? Whether if you're a grandparent, they're still following you. They're still watching you. I know grandkids are you know, they may love mom and dad, oh, but it's something about old pop. It's something about grandma or call her Gigi. Oh, it's just something about grandparents. Amen? We see their walk of life. Amen? And most of the time, they rescue us from so many beatings anyway. <laughs> I'm going to go to grandma's house. <laughs> Amen? Oh, kids know how to do it. They will cry. With grandma, I want to go grandma. And they'll cry all the way until you say, you make that phone call. And they know when you make that phone call and they hear grandma's voice. <laughs> oh, kids. Yeah. Hello, we've been there. Come on, you've been a baby too. Hello, you may not remember those days. <laughs> but listen. Jesus spake unto them, saying, I'm the light of this world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Now, you got to understand something about light. In light, there's power. There's energy. Amen. You remember when Jesus said, you're the light of this world, or you're the salt of the earth. The salt, it makes a difference. Amen. Even the Bible said salt is good. You know, I'm not trying to mess with high pressure or nothing, but the salt is good. Hey, the Bible, you can throw it on that steak <laughs> and potatoes. The salt is good. It changed the flavor, didn't it? That's what Jesus is saying. You're going to change the flavor of this world. Amen. You're going to change what's going on. But not only are you a difference maker, he said, you're going to be the energy. You're going to be the life. Amen? Oh, don't you, you, you know, you got people that are just, they live like Eeyore. Nobody likes me. Yeah. You know, it's, it, it's like I can't be around you. I love you, but I need something uplifting. Hey, man, I need something to carry me on. Hey, man, I need some energy. That's what he said. Oh, the Christian. You're going to be the energy. You're going to be the very light. Amen. That's why some people, they look at us like, man, how could you be happy during a time like this? How could you be so encouraged during a time like this? Do you see what we're going through? Do you see our nation? Hey, man, we can say, well, I just got Jesus, man. Hey, man, and I'm not of this world. Hey, man, I'm on my way to heaven. Hey, man, so I got joy. I can rejoice. Hey, man, because I got God in me. Hey, man, and your life will project and edify them. And they say, you know what? Hey, man, I got sharpened today. I met a man, hey, man, and he said he was a Christian. But when he told me about Jesus and what Jesus did in his life and in his heart and in his mind, hey, man, I got, I got kind of convicted. Yes, I did, but I also was sharpened, hey, man, and I got filled with joy. It changed the course of my day. Hey, Amen. Oh, Christian, just think about the things you could do to this world. Amen. If you only tap into the power and the very authority that God has given you. Amen. Praise God. You're the light. Oh, you're the life of the party. Uh-oh. Look at his leadership right out of Psalms 23.3. He restoreth my soul. Good leaders will restore his followers. Hello. I'll strengthen those that follow me. 
I'll uphold them. Amen? I'll restore them and encourage them. Amen? One thing that I heard from a great leader, he said, I will never tear you down if I can't pick you up. Hello? And tearing down, meaning I'm just going to help you out by saying some things, but then I'm going to pick you up by giving you the information that's going to lead you and guide you and strengthen you. Amen? Going to pick you up. But he restoreth my soul when it's been broken by my own decisions and misleading information. I went down the wrong paths of life. I took a wrong turn somewhere. And it left my life empty and destroyed and dark. And I kind of got bitter at some things in life. What people may have said about me, what they've done against me. I've stretched out my hand all day long helping people and caring for people. But when I was broken down, it's like nobody was there for me. You ever felt that way? But God will restore your soul. God will bring you joy. Amen. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Amen. For his name's sake. His name's sake this morning. His name is Jesus, which means Savior. We needed a leader. When God looked down upon the earth, he said, man, these folks need mercy. You have to understand that we all went in the way of the devil. The devil sinned in eternity past when he fell from heaven. We took upon his nature. Took upon his nature. It's a destructive nature, sin nature. And God said, man, I have a judgment awaiting for Satan and his angels. And my creation that was so perfect is going to have to join him in that judgment because I'm not a respective person. God just has to judge sin. But he said, they need mercy and grace. They need a deliverer from the wrath to come. This is the Bible said. Heaven, I mean, hell was created for the devil and his angels. You look in the book of Peter, and he's even talking about angels when they fornicated during the day of Noah. When the angels, the sons of God, came down unto the daughters of men and out came hybrid beings and giants, Peter said they fornicated and God locked them up in judgment like a Tartarus. He said, so if they fornicated and God locked them up until judgment, so there's still some angels running around but there were some angels that sinned worse <laughs> and got locked up. And he said, if they didn't escape their chains under judgment, how will we escape for fornicating? He said, if God locked up angels for that sexual perversion, perverse act, how will mankind escape for their pornography? But he saved us from ourselves. We needed a leader to come into this world. Nobody was qualified to die on a cross and to save us from our sins. Nobody was qualified to be the light of this world, to lead us to the path of righteousness. Nobody was qualified, amen, as we look in the book of Revelation, amen, as they looked upon that book and they said, man, who can open up the seals? Who's worthy? Oh, and that little old lamb came out there, didn't he? Oh, that lamb of almighty God came out there. He said, oh, he's worthy to open up the book. He's worthy, amen, and he's worthy this morning to still save your soul, amen. Yes, he is. Listen, he restoreth my soul. He leadeth me 
and the path of righteousness for his name's sake. But bad counsel. We talked about good counsel. We talked about the leadership of Jesus. But bad counsel said, Blessed is the man that walketh not into the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And his law doth he meditate day and night. But he said, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsels, because these counsels have bad instruction. They're going to lead you into prison. They're going to lead you into addictions. Bad influences. Upon many, upon many years of our life growing up, our parents warned us against, as we entered into high school, stay away from them. You'll get suspended. Stay away from them. You might get expelled. Stay away from them. You might fall behind and not graduate. Bad counsel. And in Matthew 15, verse 14, Jesus talks about it. Excuse me. Remember about that drink of water I told you I was going to get? Thank you for that. Thank you for my five-second break. Matthew 15, 14. Jesus said, let them alone. Leave them alone. They be blind leaders. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, they'll both fall into a ditch. Oh, I heard somebody preaching this morning. Amen. We got we got a lot of our churches are, are streaming online. You know, and I was just laying there like, God, what am I going to preach this morning? And I heard somebody preaching. And as soon, you know, you kind of wake up and your senses kick in. You're hearing. You hear birds and you try and get your eyes open. You know, you just y'all know the process of waking up. <laughs> it's a process. <laughs> Just to get out of bed. <laughs> and I just heard that scripture. If the blind lead the blind, they'll both fall into a ditch. Look at the leadership. Look at the leadership Jesus just spoke of. He said these are blind leaders. And it's Proving that Jesus wasn't a blind leader, was he? Because his same instruction from over 2,000 years ago and his leadership is impacting us right now. And we're not dark in understanding during a time like this, are we? Our eyes are open. Amen. Our souls are ready. Amen. Our hearts have peace. Amen. Because of the instruction that keeps our heart. Amen. Praise God. That's something we should rejoice about. Thank God for our leader. Amen. Because we have such a great leader. Amen. We go about telling people about Jesus. Amen. And how he's keeping our hearts and our minds and our souls during a time such as this. Amen. I'm telling you, this is a, a time to tell people about Jesus. Because there's people really wanting to know, amen, what to do and where to go. They're looking over here and there's rioting. They're looking over here and there's destruction. They're looking Looking over here and buildings are set on fire. They don't know where to go. They don't know who to trust. But I'm telling you, you can trust in the leadership of Jesus Christ this morning. And he'll lead you through the paths of righteousness. As the Bible said, his word is a lamp unto our feet. Amen. It's a lamp. We don't have to walk in darkness. Amen. Because when you walk in darkness, you don't know what you're stumbling over. Amen. And Jesus is not a one that will deceive you. He's not a man that he should lie. He's not going to lead lead you into a ditch. Amen. He's not going to lead you there. And neither will those that he called to be leaders, such as these men we've seen in our Bible reading. 
Read the book of Acts. They were going around healing people, the, bl the, the lame man at the gate. And they were out preaching and people were getting saved. But when those leaders would come and they'd preach and say, you're the one that's guilty of Jesus' blood. You consented to his death. But it was all according to plan so that we can get forgiveness and redemption for Israel. So that we could be saved. But they fought against that message. And they fought against the very help that was coming from Jesus Christ. Hello. They did. And they were cut to the heart every time they heard these men preach. And so they locked them in prison. Locking preachers in prison. But oh. When they were in prison, I believe an angel said, Peter, let's get out of here. <laughs> let's get out of here. What you need to do is go back into the marketplace. Go back into the highways and the byways. Amen. Go back into the city. Amen. And no tell people about Jesus. Tell them about this message. Tell them about this great leader. Amen. Tell them about the one who loves them and would save their soul, who came down from heaven, as Jesus said. I, I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but to do the will of him that sent me. Amen. And he accomplished it as he hung upon that cross. Amen. And said, it is finished. Amen. The work is done. Amen. And all that will believe. Amen. Will be led in the past of righteousness. Amen. But all those who he have called as leaders won't lead you into a ditch either. In his first Thessalonians 5.12, he said, we beseech you, brethren, as I'm about to close and the musician comes. We beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you. So right here, he's encouraging Christians to know them, to know your leaders, to know your pastor. Hello, you can search my life. You're supposed to, to see if I'm li living and, and connected with God, to see if I'm really leading you according to the scriptures, according to the Bible, if I'm really leading you, amen, either through the straight gate or the broad gate. Amen. But he said, know those that labor among you. Know them that labor among you. We even have leaders in our organization. I know them. Amen. And I trust them. Yes, I do. I trust them. I know their life. And I love them. And they love you. And when they come by to visit us, you honor them because they admonish you in the Lord. Amen. They come visit us. Y'all, you guys remember Pastor Olson? Oh, he loves you. He prays for you. Amen. And Lord willing, after all of this opens up, maybe, maybe Pastor come by. Amen. And we got more leaders that you got to meet. Pastor Cackle and Reverend Kenson, they love you. Amen? We're going to admonish them. As they admonish us, amen, we're going to give them honor. Amen? Because they're chosen vessels and chosen men of God to lead us. Amen? The leadership. But as we all follow the great leader who is not blind, as I shared with you before, as I close, God's not blind this morning. And he's seen all of this before it unfolds. As he even sees your very desire before you even ask him. But what we're going through in this life, as I explained before, it's like a parade. And we only have a side view of a parade. We're on the sidewalk, aren't we? And you can only see the very beginning in the parade in motion from the beginning and as it's coming past you with your side view. But God has a blimp view. 
And he could see the very beginning and end all in one. He could see the whole parade in motion at once. He could see the beginning and the end at once. And so since he saw the end, he gave it to us right in his word. He said, let this lead you as the time approaches. Let this guide you. And so many leaders down through the years put their leadership and in instruction in books and manuals and so many different things. Oh, but the greatest leader of all, the greatest leader of all wrote to us to guide us into the greatest path. What's the greatest path, preacher? A path that leads us straight to God. That leads us straight to heaven. And Jesus is the only way this morning. As he says, I'm the way to the Father. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. You see, you try to get to heaven any other way. And you're an intruder to the kingdom. Jesus is the door. Amen. But this morning, he's standing at the door of your heart, knocking. Will you let him in this morning? So many people, they just want a savior. And we even feel those effects as we try to help people. They call us and need help out of their situation. But all they want is just substance and money and not your instruction that could help them to really stay out of their situation. But they just want you to save them out of their temporary destruction. Hello. But so it is. Not only is he our Savior, but he's our Lord. He's our Lord and Savior. So as you ask him this morning to save you from your condition, because he does have the authority to save, as they question him about it, who only but God has the power to save and forgive sins? He said, oh, I'll show you how I got the power. Rise up and walk. <laughs> uh, he set that man free. He took up his bed. Amen. And walked. He said, oh, I got authority upon earth. And this morning, he has the power and authority to deliver you from your situation. But will you let him have the power and authority to lead you and to guide you in these days? Amen? And also involved in that is he has placed leaders in the body of Christ, apostles and prophets and preachers and teachers for the edification of the body of Christ. This is how Jesus is leading. Amen? So will you let pastor lead you? Will you trust me? Will you follow me as I follow the Lord? And ultimately, at the end of the day, we're all just following him. But this is God's order. This is God's order. Amen? And we're all on our way to heaven. Amen? We're all on our way to heaven. Following the great shepherd. Following the greatest leader. But this morning, you may have asked Jesus to be your savior in times past. But you've been letting other people lead you and they've led you right into what Jesus had to deliver you from. You've been following bad counsels. But will you follow his counsel this morning? So that he can keep you from the snares and traps of this life. And he'll open your eyes to where you'll even be able to see the trap. Like, oh, I'm not stupid. I'm not stupid. I see the trap. My Lord 
gave me light and opened up my eyes to see the traps and the snares. Oh, and I'm not falling into them, whether if they be political or whatever it is, I'm not falling into them because my eyes are open and my heart is ready and I love all people. Amen? I love all people. Don't you love all people? As one man shared with me, as I shared a quote with him, that in the foxhole, there's no atheist in the foxhole. Every man believes in God. And this old vet, he shared with me, he said, young man, you're right. Because we're scared for dear life out there. He said, and I asked him, you got some wisdom for me from your time in the military? He said, he said, there's no racism either. Because he said, during the time of war, to the enemy, we all bleed red. So he said, all races came together and we were brothers. We came together. Because to the enemy, we all bleed red. And that touched me. It touched me. He wasn't of the same color as me. And he took me and my wife. You remember that? Took us right into his home. Showed me all of his awards and achievements of his time in the military. And he took me in as his own. Right now we are maybe in a time of war. But to the devil, we all have a soul that he wants to be lost. So why don't we come together so that every soul can make it to heaven? Amen? Because God would that none would perish, but all come to repentance. And he gave us the greatest leader that will lead us out of all of this. But will you accept his leadership today and become his disciple? And let him be your Lord this morning. God bless you is my prayer as you spend time. Because what I'm asking you to do this morning is not just to call upon Jesus only, but begin to pick this up. Pick it up and read it daily. And allow him to lead you and guide you. Will you dedicate your life this morning to reading and praying and seeking God's instruction? Because this is what's keeping me. Amen. And let it keep you during this time. God bless you as we find a time to pray and look to him this morning.